can drama enrich a school's curriculum? And I'm not talking about a drama period on the timetable or a play here and a play there. But drama as a method, as a pedagogy, every day, every class, every lesson, every subject. Unbelievable, right? So let me introduce you to these two amazing school leaders who have been doing just that. Lisa and Richard lead the Woodrow First School in Redditch in the UK. And they have been using drama as their pedagogy to run their primary school. I got this opportunity to visit them, to talk to them, to talk to the children of that school and to see how amazingly the children are shaping up using drama every day, every moment they are in school. I went into their nursery classroom and I saw their teacher working with all the nursery children using drama. They were going into the imaginary world, they were coming into real world and they were doing lots of different things which would stimulate their intellect as well stimulate them physically. Then I went to their uh, higher classes, class three and four, and we had such deep conversations with the children. And then I randomly went into a science class and they were doing drama and they were doing science at the same time. It was just unbelievable. So here is a 30 minute conversation on camera with Lisa and Richard at Woodrow First School where they share their experience of using drama as their pedagogy for running the entire school. Please do watch the entire conversation because there's a lot to be learned from them. Today we are here with Richard and Lisa from Woodrow First School in Redditch, UK. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I'm very happy that both of you have been so welcoming. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we basically are trying to understand the role of drama and role of drama in education and learning generally. And um, in our platform, we have been doing a lot of teacher workshops and, you know, student workshops uh, and working with parents also to make them understand how drama helps. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, there are certain things which only, you know, can come from professionals like you who have been running the school on mantle, I mean, primarily. So tell us a little bit about uh, why did you choose to do mantle of the expert to run six years of the school, first six to five years? So we've been using Mantle of the Expert since 2010. Mm. So it was a, I, I moved to this school from another school and it was a perfect opportunity because the staff said that we, we want to develop the curriculum in a slightly different way. We want to interest the children. We want to get them involved in their learning to a greater extent. And I said, well, why don't we try this approach that I've come across before? Mm -hmm. And it's developed from, from then onwards. We started with very small steps. Okay. And to, to where we are now, you know, whereby we, we use mantle in many, many areas of the curriculum. I don't know what Lisa thought when I first suggested it. Mm, yeah, we were, we were looking for something different in school because as teachers we were a bit bored of what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as Richard says, the children weren't really very engaged or they weren't enjoying their learning as much as we wanted them to. So when Richard came and suggested Mantle of the Expert, he first started talking um, to us about, oh, you know, the children can run a bear sanctuary in Russia. It sticks in my mind now because everyone looked at me, um, all the other teachers, and they were a bit like, what is he talking about? <laughs> <laughs> They can't, our children can't think about Russia, you know, they don't know where they live. Mm -hmm. But um, so at first we were a little resistant, even though we wanted something different. But um, Richard then did a workshop with us as teachers and then we sort of started to think, oh, OK, yes. Yeah, this sounds interesting. And like Richard said, we tried it. Um, so just three of us first use some plans that had already been written on, a, on the Mantle of the Expert website, tried it, saw the enthusiasm and the engagement from the children and how they were so excited, but also how they were learning. Oh. Um, we became excited because of that and carried on. And then 
very quickly, the other staff wanted to try it as well, didn't they, and joined in, and we all then started learning all together. And the parents were engaged with what the children, they were, they were interested, they wanted to, to know from us what we were doing with the children because they were talking about their learning mm. at home. Mm. So it's... Yeah, they it, hadn't been doing that before, no, have they, the no. children? So it built from there. And, and I think we're in a position now where, we're, where we want, wanted the children initially and continue to want the children to have involvement in their learning, to ask questions, to be challenged, um, to um, have experiences that, through their imagination, that perhaps they might not have had before. Mm -hmm. um, we want there to be tension in their learning. Um, we want the children to have a point of view and obviously use the, the drama conventions that, right. that at the time were, were something new to us. So. Mm. Now, when we say drama, usually um, drama in India, we have uh, this uh, little saying that, oh, you do a lot of drama at home. We have a lot of drama going on already. We don't need more of drama. Mm. So uh, how do you uh, then define, I'm, I'm talking from the perspective of um, teachers who you had to kind of uh, bring in to, uh, to drama mm -hmm. and parents to uh, understand what drama really is. Um, so the, the difference between drama and theatre basically, because yes. the moment you say drama, it's all about performance. performance mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. if you could throw a little light on um, how drama and drama in education is not performance oriented. Yeah. Well, none of us are actors, are we? <laughs> yeah. um, we? We don't have any drama background, do we, any no. of our staff in school so I, I I understand I think that um, it, it's very similar and it was very similar for us to think oh drama we, we're scared of drama we're used to doing like role play on training days that kind of thing and everyone shies away from that yeah so it was when we looked I think at the dramatic conventions yeah from from Dorothy Heathcote that we started to see drama as not performance mm -hmm. so drama for learning as something different so um, we started to um, practice some of the dramatic conventions, so a still image and creating that with the children and then running it like a film or reading a letter in the voice of the person who mm. wrote it. All, you know, the whole, whole range of dramatic conventions. Mm. And we just started to learn them a few at a time and we had some training and then we could see that, that, that drama for learning is different, very different and everyone can do it and we can do it as a teacher we don't have to put on a performance we can be ourselves mm. still and move in and out of the drama yes very quickly you know within seconds so moving from the if world of the story that the children uh, or the as if world of the story to the the reality in the classroom where you can reflect on what's happening in the story and the children are very good at doing that they're very good at switching very very quickly from from one world to another Right. So I think the old, oh, sorry, the older children were a little bit resistant at first, I think, because um, they were a little bit more self-conscious. But now, because uh, the children are used to working with Mantle from nursery, as they come through school, it's the way that we do our learning here. They don't necessarily realise that it's not the same in other schools, if that makes sense. But it's building on that sort of playfulness mm. in early years. Mm. Before we had Mantle, that was lost as the children moved through school. Yes. Yeah. Um, but now they continue with it, but it's just, it's every day to them now. And they, they always know it's the story. Mm. So you might be walking through a school um, and you, you'd say to one of the children and, you know, their responsible team monitor containers to make sure the containers don't move. So you might just say to, to one of them, how are the containers? Is, is everything mm. all right with it? Mm. Oh yeah, everything's fine. You know, we've had a, we've had a, a tiny shift, but we're happy with everything in time. Mm. And they will respond to the story on a, on a daily basis to right. you. So they know, they know what's going on, mm -hmm. but they know it's not real. Yes, they, that's important that they know that it's not real. Because at times we have this uh, problem at times, not all the time, but that we have um, done a mantle and then um, the, the children get very disappointed that, oh, we are not really, you okay, know, yeah. saving a park or we are yeah. not really uh, saving uh, lions or tigers. Yeah. So um, 
so that's one part of it but uh, what i would like uh, both of you to uh, kind of comment on is um, free play is a method that is doing rounds you know everybody knows about free play you go to any school in india they know about free play play way method that's what they say okay um now when children do drama it's very similar to the way they play at home generally you know they playing teacher they playing office or whatever mm-hmm. um how does then this play become learning when does that happen when the children are playing and suddenly you can quantify it or maybe assess them mm-hmm. for learning how does that happen i i think that that comes down to the the planning Mm-hmm. Yeah. That the fact that you will you will you will plan tasks yeah. for the children to do yeah. within the story yeah. that will be often linked to the curriculum yeah. so it, i think it's down to the careful planning and how you present it to the children right so yeah we use something called the generic tasks list mm-hmm. which um again i think is on the right like the expert website isn't it, is, it? yeah Yeah so that um gives a focus to the play and the drama mm-hmm. so that there will be a task to do for the client right and um the client demands that you know this is done and that's when the learning has to come in because the children have to um respond to the client so it may be that um oh, I'm trying to think of an example now and your mind goes blank <laughs> um so the client might say oh, I need to see your uh plans for the rooms for the care home hmm. by the end hmm. of tomorrow so then the children have to know have to then produce their plan they have to draw it to scale they have to know to label the different places they have to work out the area so they've 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 been playing in role before but now here's a focused task and we need to do it because the client demands it hmm. and it's i feel like it's the demands of the client that generate the learning yeah. through the tasks yeah Think. so that so that you as a teacher in your planning hmm. plan it so that the client makes these demands upon the team hmm. and that's what the children will respond to right so very rarely is it play for the sake of play oh. it will be some form of play with purpose because there's always something to do um there's always a response that's required from the team and the children will see that and they will want to do it because their team have an expertise and they want to maintain that expertise so i do think it does come come from careful planning mm. Yeah. Mm. another example might be so i think in year 1 they were flying to africa weren't they to work with some animals so there's all that joyful play in you know being on the aeroplane and looking out of the window and all of that side of things but before then they'd needed to find out okay so if we're going to africa what's it like there what do we need to take with us what sort of prior yeah, knowledge yes, yes yeah what's the climate like you know do we need to pack our coats or our mm. sunglasses mm. so yeah the learning becomes part of it i think because it's it's needed really yeah they can't continue without it really and you have to teach them yeah. about the climate you do have to yeah. teach them yes about whether they'll need a visa or not mm. you need to teach them how to fill in the form so that it's not just discovery learning it's 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 much more than that because that has a purpose and then you will use that within the story yeah i think this is purely life skill based mm. because this is filling up a form uh, applying for visa buying your ticket these yes. are skills that uh, all of us uh, need and uh, Yeah. drama is i think uh, uh, mental especially and drama is a beautiful way to explore that yeah i think um, so yeah. H- how is it different from simulate simulation basically so um the p- mental projects that we do how is it different from simulating a situation how do you uh, look at that i i i always think it goes back to the children are a team mm. there's a community mm. there's a community of inquiry they're working together with you as a teacher and the children as a team are are that that one community with a common purpose 
So everything they're thinking of, they're bringing together, they bring back to their, their community of inquiry. So the idea of the, the importance of achieving things as a community, I think maybe makes, distinguishes Mantle from, from, from many other approaches to learning. In this, there's always a commission, isn't there? There's always a job to be done yeah. yes. for someone, I uh. think. Um, but I think also in Mantle, we're, trying, we're following the children's um, interests and lines of inquiry as well. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm not sure about simulation, whether that's fixed or not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think within Mantle, there's uh, flexibility to be able to go off. Um, and, and come back. Yes, yeah. follow the children and then come back and then go off again. Yeah. So, so we're always like listening to the children and trying to respond in the moment. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And we, we always plan the beginning of a mantle in detail, but we have some ideas of where we want to go or where we want to get to, but mm. we, we're planning then every day really in the moment in response to the children. Mm. Right. Um, what kind of response have you seen in children uh, with respect to uh, mathematical learning, like uh, reasoning or logic, um, developing that sense, uh, developing uh, artistic sense, etc.? I, I think it's important that they have opportunities to apply the skills they've learned outside of the mantle within the mantle. Mm. So it might be if, if if they're thinking about um, a space where a new factory is about to be built, they need to know about perimeter. Mm. They need to know about shape. They need mm. to know about area. Mm. So if, if you're planning your curriculum carefully and you teach the children these things, then they get the opportunity to apply, apply it in their mantle. Right. And I think you can, you can adapt that right across the curriculum. Mm. So the many times we've, we've had dragons with um, we've had giants with toothache and to quieten the giant down we need to work out which tooth is sore so how's the giant chewing we need to find out about how the giant's chewing things to work out mm. how he's got his toothache right. <laughs> so there, right. are, there are lots of you know it's about carefully applying what you need to be taught mm -hmm. And sometimes they apply what they've already learned, don't they? They apply yeah. it and they uh, reinforce it, they use it. Sometimes we'll come to a point in the story together that we think, oh, okay, well, we don't know how to do that. So then we we'll stop there and stop then it. step out. Yes, exactly. Do some, mm. um, sometimes we call it training. So, oh, <laughs> we need to have some training on this. Um, and then we go back into the story. Right. Yeah. Yes, we have, we have done this with... Um, uh, age, um, I would say, um, till about age 12. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We haven't tried it beyond age 12, mm -hmm. uh, mantle. I don't know how that works. Uh, but uh, we have seen uh, uh, a growth in children in understanding and asking inquiry again. Mm -hmm. uh, children who have been with us for over uh, three, four years that we have been doing drama, I won't say mantle only, mm -hmm. but uh, working, because we work with literature a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So like the nursery poem that we were doing, the yeah. snail poem. Yeah. So we have many poems like that and we yeah. build from that. So we take little, you know, strands from there and we yes. build yes. mantles on that, yes. Yes. if need be, not necessarily. Yeah. Um, so when it comes to maths and um, literacy or language, mm -hmm. basically language and math mathematics, uh, what kind of progress do you see in children uh, who have been with you throughout, from nursery up to uh, year three, year four, mm -hmm. year four? Um, uh, were, I mean, vis-a-vis -vis who has joined in a little late, maybe, and uh, what yeah, kind of... Children who join, join later, um, they, they soon get used to working this way. It doesn't take them long to... Um, be fascinated mm -hmm. by this approach. You know, wow, this is something com completely different. Um, we're really keen for children not just to learn to read, but read to learn more as well. Mm -hmm. So, so if we can get them learning at an early age how to read, then they can apply that in their in their mental work, um, so that they have a. Uh, uh, their, co their comprehension is 
um, more solid. Um, but to quantify it against mantle, I think is I think is tricky mm. to say because we do mantle, our children are better readers at the age of nine. I I think that's difficult. What I would say is because we do mantle, our children are really keen to know more and they want to find out more and they have a fascination and a thirst for learning. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's what it does. Um, yeah, I agree. I think the difference is in the motivation to um, know the maths or to yeah, communicate mm -hmm. or to write or to read because there's a purpose mm -hmm. and they're not doing it for the teacher. So when uh, or not for the exams? Yes, yes. Um, when we uh, in the early days when we started, I had a, a class of year one and year two children mixed together, and they just did not want to write. Mm. And yeah, the difference was that as soon as we started doing mantle, they they wanted to. They sort of had no choice because they wanted to carry on the story and they wanted it to develop. Mm. So they but they didn't feel like I was making them write. Um, so I did some interviews at the time and it was one of the boys said, we're not writing for the teacher, we're writing for ourselves or we're writing for the story, we're writing for the mantle. If the client demands mm. a certain piece of writing done in a certain way, mm. they will respond to that because that's what's been requested of them. Right. You, my last question to you, Richard, because I mean, even to you, um, you have come from a, a different kind of a setting, a, a more orthodox way of, or traditional way of learning, I would say, to ad adopting this method, drama method in, into a regular school. Um, how difficult uh, has it been for you to do that or easy? And what is the difference that you see in the way children are responding uh, over here in your school in this method uh, whereas you know when you were there in traditional way of teaching uh, in a traditional school what is the difference that you see in children in their approach to learning? I, I, I'm going to borrow um, uh, um, a <laughs> metaphor from, from Lisa um, and you know when you go to a city they have the open top bus tours yes and you you, you sit in the open top bus tour and you're taken to place A, place B, place C, place D, place E, all the sites that are designed for you to go and see. So you'll go to specific places that organizers, maybe 300 miles away, plan for you. Mm. With Mantle, you get off the tour bus, you're taken to interesting places in the city by people who know the city really well. Mm. So you explore the curriculum, you find fascinating elements of the curriculum, rather than being delivered a curriculum. And I, I think that's key, and I think that's how you see difference among the children. They're happier to talk about what they've learnt, they're enthusiastic about what they've learnt, and they have that word thirst for learning more. So it's that it's that love of learning that develops that I've noticed. They're learning for the story and they're learning for each other and they're not just necessarily learning because they're being told that's what they've got to learn. Yeah, Agreed? I agree. Thanks for your <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> Lisa, what do you think as a teacher? Yes. Um, how difficult or how has the change been for you? You did mention that it was difficult in the beginning. Mm. You couldn't... Uh, yeah. really accept it wholeheartedly but now that you're teaching yeah. uh, and you meet children or teachers from other schools who don't yes. use this method yeah. so how do you see that difference and yeah it's do you feel proud mm, yeah <laughs> yeah definitely um but i don't think it's for everyone for every teacher mm. i think here we we all started together at the same time so we all knew that if it went wrong, it was okay because we were, you know, we were all at the same point. So we were taking risks and saying to each other, oh, it didn't work. Oh, well, perhaps we could try it this way. So we were all learning together at the same time. And I think that's what made it work here, maybe. That's what's made it stick across the whole school. 
Um, and I think it keeps people here because we love teaching in this way. Because every, every year, even though the curriculum content is the same, the way that we're teaching and learning it with the children is different. So it keeps everything fresh for us. Um, also, so, so when we meet other teachers and they're talking about, you know, taking their plan off the shelf that they've been teaching for the last five years and they're a bit fed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we feel like, oh, well, we're OK, because you know, <laughs> even though it's hard work because yes. we're planning again, yes. it's exciting. It makes it... Um, it keeps you alive, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Um, because as the teacher, you have to enjoy each day as well as Absolutely. the children. Yes. I think that's what Mantle does for us, definitely. Um, yeah, I think I've left yeah. my train of thought. Again. Yeah, and as a head yes. teacher, yeah. you really want to be working with a happy staff. Mm. Yes. And they are most of the time. Thank you so much uh, for your time. You're welcome. Really, because um, for me, it has always been, you know, uh, we look, I look, I especially look for validation. Okay, this is, this is, this is all right. This is good. This is valid. Yeah. And that has been the case since I started. Uh, but uh, once I came across um, the mantle of the expert, commission model, or just other various drama conventions, um, it has given me a lot of strength mm. uh, as, a, as a human being to make mistakes and, uh, yes. you know, and learn, from, uh, learn from the children as we are in the class, yeah. take those risks yes. um, knowingly and unknowingly. Yeah. Course. So, um, thank you so much for again uh, reassuring uh, with the school that you run that Mantle uh, works works beautifully. Thank you. Well, it, it, it helps us to have that get. We need reassuring, don't we, as <laughs> yeah. well? So, thank you. It works both ways. <laughs> thank you so much. No thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that will be all from our end. Thank you. <laughs>